Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to thank Dr. Houston for taking the chance and letting me have a microphone. Uh, let me start off. Dr. Houston invited me today to talk about creativity. And I'm not a terribly creative person, so instead of doing that, I have a series of jokes I'd like to share with you. Uh, first one, I picked up a CD of Learn Spanish While You Sleep to play at night, but the CD was damaged, so it kept skipping. So now I can't speak Spanish, I can just stutter in Spanish. <laughs> I didn't say they were good jokes, I'm a dad. So let me start off. Creativity is not a talent. It is not a talent. It is not a personality trait with which you are born. It is not something that is a part of your fiber that you can identify in someone else. It is simply a way of operating. In the 1960s, psychiatrists from Cambridge conducted a study where they studied people they thought were creative and compared them to people they thought were not creative and used different metrics to find out where their creativity came from. And they couldn't actually find anything. They looked at their upbringing, their education, their work ethic, and all of these different things. And there's very little variation between the two groups. So what really happened? What they did find was that creativity occurs through a balance of operating in two different modes, one of which you can all identify very easily, and the second one you probably don't even think about as a productive means of being creative. The first mode that we can all recognize is what's called the closed mode, or what is often referred to as working. And we know what working looks like because we end up doing it every day, especially here in the United States. Most adults you'll ever meet spend about 100% of their time in the working mode. And it looks like this. Checklist, check, 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 get it done, do the task, go home at the end of the day. There's no room for fooling around because that's not an efficient use of time. That's the closed mode. The open mode, however, in contrast, you have seen your entire life, but you probably don't think of it as being productive. Where the closed mode is working, the open mode is playing. Think of a time when you were younger and you had nothing to do. What do you and your friends end up doing? You just come up with something, right? Years ago, when I lived in Hinman Hall, it was the end of the year, and all the computers were handed back in, which meant that suddenly the student body had nothing to do, right? You guys remember what that was like at the beginning of the year before you got your laptops? Do you remember? That was a long time ago. Nobody had anything to do. I walk out of Hinman Hall, I walk out onto the quad, and I see boys playing Frisbee, except they're not playing Frisbee because they don't have a Frisbee. What they had were one of those caps that you put on a cup for soda, like at Taco Bell. That was their Frisbee. An adult operating in the closed mode would come across this piece of plastic and say, this is a cap for a cup. I don't have a cup. It has no purpose. I'm putting it in the garbage. Whereas someone in the open mode would say, what can I do with this? And they made a game. So the open mode allows you to think outside the box because there are no rules. So how do those two things work together? Well, they have drawbacks. If you're always in the open mode, in the playing mode, you don't get anything done. Nothing gets done. Just think of the internet for a moment. You go to any website that posts memes on a regular basis, you'll have a picture and you'll have some text. And within a couple days, you'll have a thousand variations of it. Maybe it'll even be a new picture that morphed out of the old one. People thinking creatively, coming up with new jokes. But nothing's actually getting done, is it? It's entertaining, and it's, and it's new, and there's nothing wrong. There's no wrong idea, but it's not an efficient use of time. Contrast, if you're always in the closed mode, you get a lot done, but you don't do anything new, ever. So you'll encounter people who spend all their life in the closed mode. The key is a balance. Here at Cardigan, we work, we work, we work, but we also get to play, don't we? Half of our day is in class, 
and the other half of our day is playing sports or clubs or hanging out. So we get to have a little bit of both. Hopefully we take that and we become better people out of it. But how do you use the open mode? How do you use the play mode? Well, you gotta go about it deliberately. You gotta set aside time. These psychiatrists said that the most creative output was when people said, you know what, between the hour of 4.30 and 5.30, I'm not going to do any work. I'm not gonna take phone calls, respond to emails. They didn't have emails in the 1960s. I don't think they had phones in the 1960s either. But I'm not gonna do any of that stuff. I'm not even gonna organize my desk or think about what I need to do next week. I'm just going to play. And you spend that hour, and it's harder than it sounds because eventually things start creeping up. You're like, you know, I have all these paper clips. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna put these paper clips away. Or, ah, oh, the floor is really dirty. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick this stuff up. And then suddenly, you're not in play mode anymore. You're back into work mode. So how do you get into play mode deliberately? There's a shortcut. And it's the second half of what I want to tell you about today. And it's something that's very important to me. Mrs. Perricone and I often laugh about how competitive we are. Um, but I laugh more than she does. Uh, but the other half of what I want to talk about today, get it? The other half of what I want to talk about today, the shortcut to get into the playing mode is humor. Humor will get you into the open mode faster than anything else, guaranteed. In fact, psychiatrists believe that humor is an evolutionary uh, trait that we inherited from our ancestors. That it doesn't just naturally occur, it became something because it allowed us to think outside the box so that we wouldn't get eaten by stuff way back when, right? Think of me if I, I, I need to fight with my bare hands against a bear with bare hands, right? Not gonna end well. Need to think of something different, okay? If I'm all work, 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 and not willing to try something new, not playing around, I'm bare food, okay? Speaking of humor, no, I'll save that one for later. So uh, it gets you into the play mode very quickly, right? Now the thing about humor is that there's a major drawback to that too. People who operate in the closed mode, and you know those people, raise your hand if you know someone who is always work, always serious. Raise your hand if you feel that maybe you are one of those people. Maybe just a few, just a few, that's good, that's good, that's healthy, okay? The thing about humor is that for those who are always in the closed mode, there's a lot of self-seriousness and solemnity and taking themselves as important. And it's not their fault, it's just, it just happens from working in the closed mode. And humor has the ability to puncture that. And then it punctures their feeling of self-worth. So when you crack a joke as a tool to lighten a situation, someone who is 100% work mode, closed mode, is going to shut it down immediately. And you see that happen in offices. You might even see that happen in your classroom. How many of you have been in a class where one of your classmates says something just a little unexpected in any way? I've been there. I was that kid. Okay, now raise your hand after that kid says something unexpected, not necessarily bad, maybe it wasn't even funny, but something just out of the usual. Raise your hand if that kid was suddenly pounced on by his classmates. Raise your hand if that classmate was pounced on by his teacher. Suddenly it is no longer a situation where thinking outside the box is welcome. So when you are in the play mode, the open mode, the only rule is that there are no wrong ideas. And if you work with other people and you expect to come up with something new, you cannot shut them down. So it's a balance. You set aside some time, play, 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 keep that task you want to solve in the back of your head. And then once you come up with that new idea, it might take a few sessions of play, you go back into work mode and it serves its purpose. And you test it out and you see if it works and you evaluate, was this a good idea or not? And it goes back and forth. And that's where the creativity comes from. It has to be a balance. So creativity is not something that you have as a personality trait. It is a way that you function. And with this in mind, 
everyone in this room has the ability to come up with something new if they allow themselves to play and if they give themselves the ability to stop that play and begin that work to test out a new idea. Who here's taken gates? Who here feels that they came up with a really original idea? Who here wishes they came up with a really original idea? Who here went to Gates and didn't come up with anything? I would not have come up with a single thing because I'm not creative. Just, it's not part of my personality. The humor is. But I will say, never apologize for having a sense of humor as a tool. I will say one more thing about humor, okay? and how it ties into creativity and how it can help. Humor and being able to joke does not make a serious situation less serious. Who here has ever been to a funeral or a wake? A lot. I've been to a handful of funerals. And the best funerals that I got to attend were funerals where we were laughing and remembering funny stories about the person who had passed. And it didn't make it any less serious, but it did make it easier for us to deal with. And that's the evolutionary trait, being able to adapt and survive and move on. If you want to be creative, be ready to play, be ready to joke around, and then be ready to get back to work. Hopefully, you guys have picked up something about that, like that from Cardigan while you've been here. Play and work. Not one is better than the other. You really need them both. Thank you for your time.